hold on there. I think we have about three more minutes. We have about three more minutes to get going and get you all on board. So remember, if you have any questions whatsoever, make sure you write them down the page. And I just want to make sure everyone can hear me. So let me know if you can hear me. And uh, if not, we can go ahead and get, take care of that. Yeah, so if you can hear me, great. I want to hear from you too, all right? Okay, good. A couple more minutes. We'll get make sure everyone is on board. I'm looking at some of your questions right now and some of your comments. So if you have any questions and comments, then write them down and um, make sure you go to the page where we leave comments. And if you can hear me, please let me know that you can hear me, all right? Great. Super. Okay, good, almost about one minute to go. I'm excited, I hope you are too. <laughs> Okay, good. Make sure you can hear me. I'm excited. <laughs> Send that. I can hear it here too. You can hear me. Neil, <laughs> checking with my tech here. Okay, guys. Just want to say welcome to everybody for being here today. I'm really excited to do this, this webinar, this free webinar on Mastering Silver Techniques. I think it's one of the things that is most challenging for people who come through the Silver Method programs, whether it's audio or live, live always being the best way to go because you're right there and all your questions get answered right, right away, is that there's so much content. There's so much information. And because it's a very subjective experience, people always wonder, am I doing it right? Am I practicing right? I mean, what if I'm doing it wrong? And if you think you're doing it wrong, then chances are you're not going to apply your tools or what you learned in the training. So I really hope that this webinar will help to clear up a lot of these different questions that come to mind. Now, at one point in time, we thought about calling it Silva Basics. But there's really nothing basic about Silva. It's very comprehensive. It's very rich in content. It so, has so much information that, that really it's, it's a very advanced program from the very beginning. And I think in some ways that's why we say you can master your experience by following what you learned in the Silva method. But there's always still questions. Because you don't carry an electroencephalogram you know, to measure your brain frequencies throughout the day or whenever you meditate, it's really hard to know what frequency you are in brain-wise. But let me tell you something that my father taught me. And he said that once you know how to go into your inner levels, and you do experience that when you go through the different meditations in the Silva training, you start off with a long relaxation, which is a long 30 minute or so meditation that takes you to very, very deep inner states, takes you into even the theta frequencies, not just alpha, but you go from beta to alpha, which is in the green band, down into the, the theta frequencies. A lot of you, when you experience the centering exercise, you lose awareness. You totally don't know, you know, you don't recall information, but you're following instructions. Because at the count of five, when you're meant to open your eyes, you do open your eyes. So that means you're still following instructions, but in the meditation itself, because you go so deep within, the only way you go deep within is by slower brain frequencies, okay? So when you go so deep within, you're going to slower brain frequencies when you, when you finally get to a frequency where you have really no self-inner controls. So the, the meditations, especially the long relax, allows you to establish inner controls at different frequencies, slower and slower frequencies every time until you're able to have awareness in the alpha frequencies and the theta frequencies. 
And when you do that, then you learn how to then reprogram or rewire your brain with better programs that will suit you and your needs and lifestyle. Okay, so the goal is to continue to practice the long meditation or the, the centering exercise at least once a week, you know, or as often as you wish, so that you can continue to establish points of reference with how you think, with your feeling, if it was physiological and mental or psychological, with your inner experience. Because the more points of reference you establish at the slower frequencies of brain, the easier it is to get back in those deep inner frequencies that are associated with deeper inner thought or a, a, a deeper inner state. And, and when you have those established, that mental state that you come to recognize is a subjective experience. The frequency of brain that allows you to experience those inner states is physical in nature because brain is a physical organ and frequencies is measurable and it's, it's detectable. And so it makes it a physical experience. But it takes that physical experience of slowing down the brain frequencies for you to become aware of the deep mental inner state, which is subjective. Once you recognize that inner state that leads to positive outcomes, then you can access or recreate that inner state regardless of brain frequency. And I think it's, I mean, if you need to rehear this during the replay, by all means, go back and rehear this explanation. Because what this means is that you're able to internalize your focus, bring about that same sensation that you have when you're in that deep frequency or that slow frequency, and then picture outcomes or picture your, your goals already achieved or, or think about uh, projects or challenges or problems and how to resolve them. Do your thinking there and then open your eyes and take action. And in this way, you're really transforming the silver tools into a very practical way of utilizing them as you need them. I teach this a lot in silver manifesting and we call that like silver on the go and, uh, and or the, the stoplight techniques or the, you know, just the open eye meditations because you can also meditate, meditate with eyes open. But I don't wanna get too advanced right now, Let's go back to the silver basics. In the silver, in the silver method, one of the first things that people ask is, how do I know that I'm an alpha? You know that, you're gonna know that, first of all, because you uh, because alpha is such an easy frequency to achieve. In fact, you know, if you just close your eyes and take a deep breath, you're probably already slowing down brain frequency from the, uh, from the beta frequencies that are between 14 and 21 cycles of per second of electrical emissions. The moment you close your eyes, your brain frequency begins to slow down because the only um, sense that requires high beta frequencies to operate it is the focused sense of sight. That's it. So even if you like to focus your vision, like when, like when you're daydreaming and or when you're like internalizing your thought process and your eyes go blur, that blurry vision as you're thinking, the state of reverie, hmm. You know, anytime you defocus your vision, your eyes don't have to be focused, obviously, and your brain frequency doesn't have to be so high. So the moment you defocus your vision and or close your eyes, then your brain frequency begins to slow down. So to get to alpha, which is between seven and 14 cycles per second of brain wave electrical emissions, uh, is very easy. Now, what you want to do, though, is to continue your deep, rhythmic, slow, and paced breathing with muscles in your body relaxed so that you can continue to deepen that inner state and continue to allow the brain frequency to slow down. You do not need an electroencephalogram to measure your brain frequency because you're going to be an alpha. So trust in that. Trust the fact that your brain frequency will slow down automatically as you close your eyes. Then, more so, as you pace your breathing. And you make it nice, deep belly breath. Not upper chest breathing. <laughs> no, it's like nice, deep. In through your nose, out through your nose. Nice, deep breaths, okay? And then, if you have your muscles relaxed, it's even better.
okay? So that, those are three things that are going to ensure that you enter your alpha frequency. Now to deepen further, you continue with your deep breathing and your relaxed body into a very comfortable position that the only other frequency you can go to is going to be theta. Now alpha is associated with dynamic active meditation where you can infuse it with emotion and with, and with, um, with your desire belief and expectancy, especially when you're programming using mirror of the mind. In theta, you're not, you're not going to do that. You cannot do that. Theta is passive. You might get impressions of maybe dreamlike experiences or visions or words or phrases, and then your frequency comes back up and you, and you ask yourself, wow, what was that? And you analyze it a little bit, and then you take a deep breath and you deepen some more, and you go back into that deep, frequency or a deep interstate with a slower frequency back into theta probably. Anytime your your mind and, and, inner, and inner experience is very passive, where it seems like you don't recall what happened, but you know you were not asleep, you're probably at theta. But you cannot generate thought or activate your intellect or your, your thinking process. You can't be pondering about things and wondering, hmm, how do I solve this problem? How do I picture this? You know, emote my energy and, and all my, my emotions. You can't do that from, from theta. It's passive. You do that from alpha, where it's very dynamic. But you get the best of both worlds. You get dynamic meditation and or passive meditation, and you can do both in one meditation. You start off with dynamic meditation, and you end up with passive meditation, and then you have to come back out through alpha to come to beta. Remember, beta is the outer world. Alpha is the world of thought. Theta, there's an, an, an element of thought, but it's passive. And then you have, where it says the black bar there, it says delta frequencies, that's your unconscious. The unfortunate thing is that most people on the planet are either going to be conscious or they're going to function unconsciously. Because most people still do not know how to access their inner conscious. To them, it's still subconscious. In fact, most people on the planet don't know how to do what you're doing. You're really lucky. And so most people don't know how to activate or how to stay aware in those slower frequencies that for them is the subconscious, for you has been transformed into inner conscious. You have outer conscious, inner conscious, and yes, unconscious as you sleep, and you're in deep, slow wave sleep. The rest of the world has outer conscious and unconscious. Interesting, huh? And even when they're doing daydreaming, they're not even aware most of the time that they're daydreaming. They're not, it's uncontrolled daydreaming. You can daydream with your eyes open, defocused vision, with controlled daydreaming. You can say, gee, God, I really hope I achieve that. I, I know, in fact, I'm gonna achieve that outcome. Yeah, I will reduce another five pounds, I'm gonna feel great and you're picturing yourself at that ideal weight and size or the next level that you wanna to go to or the goal already achieved and your eyes are kind of tilted upward and you're creating images and you're feeling great, emoting these wonderful emotions and all these things are wonderful for you to be able to continue to stay connected with your goals and continue to do programming throughout the day as you need it, even if it's just for a few seconds at a time but you're always connected with that, okay? So, going back to what we're talking about here, let me just make sure that everyone's with me here. Going back to that, we wanna make sure that, that you recognize the fact that you are at alpha. Now, some of the reasons that we think that we're not at alpha is because we feel like we're very awake. Yes! Alpha is a light, wakeful state. It's not a deep, uh, inner, deep, heavy experience. No. If I close my eyes right now and I bring back those feelings of, that lead to positive outcomes, that inner state, I'm at alpha. And I can talk to you. I can jog. I can garden. I can cook. As long as my eyes are defocused and I'm picturing outcomes here in my mental screen area, then I'm at alpha. It's a light, wakeful state. Don't confuse that with what you experience in your training during the meditations when you're being guided by your instructor or my voice in the auto programs. 
Because there, you can let yourself go and go really deep within. But you're probably tapping more into the theta frequencies more than you are alpha. If I ask you to get engaged and do something, then you're, you're more in alpha. I hope you're following me. Uh, but don't think that because you're in a light, wakeful, chatty inner state that you're not there. You are. Remember that brain and, and, and mind and intellect is going to be processing information all the time. It's never going to be quiet. What you might do is, is discipline your thoughts to focus on maybe achieving your goals, on being in the experience. And then you might wander off again. You bring it back. Go back to achieving your goal, being in the experience. And then you might think about dinner. You bring it back. Or you might think about a challenge. You bring it back and go back into the experience. That's okay. You're normal. <laughs> Guess what? You are perfectly human, okay? And you're doing it just fine. It's when you go into your theta frequency that you're in a more passive, quiet inner state. But then you can't really work on your goals or, or create your outcomes from that point, from that deep inner state. It's great to be there. You have passive and calm mind. It's very beneficial and very healthy and very healing, but you cannot really work on your goals and, and, and solve your problems from there. You do that from alpha. Even though, even though your mind wanders, you bring it back. And when it wanders, you bring it back. You're doing fine, okay? So don't let that stop you from practicing. Even if you do it for 10 seconds, you're going to get benefits that you can't imagine, all right? So you're doing great. Uh, so I just want to make sure that, that um, you know, Autumn is saying, listen to a reference brain frequency slowing down as we breathe deeply. I seem to always tighten up again and breathe shallow again when I began the mirror of the mind or laboratory. And you know what? That's okay, especially when you get excited, right? Like when I am doing the mirror of the mind, or I'm in the laboratory, for example, and I'm working on something, and I start to work on things. Sometimes I get excited. Excitement has an element of emotion attached to it. If the, if the emotional aspect is going to be something positive that's working for you, like I picture my, myself already achieving this amazing outcome, and like, oh my God, I really love it. I feel so good. I really, really want it. I desire it. I believe I can make it happen. I'm going to make it happen without a doubt. And uh, yeah, I find myself breathing more, more in a more um, shallow way. And then when I'm in the experience, I can take a deep breath. And just really enjoy it. And, and now I'm in the experience and experience of achievement and I'm doing great. And now I can relax in there because now I'm not I'm not working towards that. So yeah, you're gonna experience all these things. And when you catch yourself, you might wonder, is it better for me to be is it better for me to breathe deeply? Or is this okay? Am I am I connected to my goal? Am I connected to my outcome? Am I connected to my my experience of achievement? Is this what it feels like? Yes, it feels great. Then you're fine, okay? So you're doing good. Don't, not to worry, okay, Autumn? Um, Christina says, how do you defocus your eyes at beta? Easy. You're not going to focus at beta, actually. You're going to go from beta to alpha when you defocus, all right? That's our goal. That's what we're always aiming to do. I usually tell people in my seminars, touch something and really concentrate. Do that right now. Like reach out and like say, I've got this little heart kind of like um, like pat, a mouse pat. But if I get this little heart and mouse pat and I touch it and really concentrate on the texture, the temperature, concentrate on the shape, what's happened to your eyesight? See, it goes defocused, right? Because you cannot focus two senses at the same time. So yeah, I'm not even hearing my environment that much. If I'm totally concentrating on what I'm touching, then it's a sense of touch. If I'm really fully concentrating, I sometimes even close my eyes, but if I keep my eyes open and I concentrate on what I'm touching, then everything else gets to focus. But if I concentrate on what I'm hearing, then, then touching gets to focus. So does eyesight, smell, and taste. So again, what are you focusing on? So I would say concentrate, do these little experiments by yourself, these little exercises where you begin to recognize how your eyes get defocused. Sometimes we drive from one point or from one location to another, and then we think to ourselves, gee, I don't remember actually 
driving it because all along you're like thinking about work or thinking about the children or thinking about your relationship and you're driving i mean you know you're getting there because in, 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 even with defocused vision you can get to your outcome you see red lights green lights yellow lights whatever you stop you go you notice you have a, a level of awareness your intelligence is always aware but your vision is not always focused have you noticed that okay so that defocusing of the vision is something that's easy to do and you can practice it anytime you concentrate on images instead of what you're seeing so if you open your eyes and you picture you're going to say a future you having achieved your outcomes and you're picturing on that space that area that's past our eyelids away from our body out here if i begin to picture on my mental movie screen what i want to achieve you can't have focused eyesight just practice with that experiment with that okay so i hope that helps you christina and I love you too. <laughs> so, okay, good. Um, and there will be a recording of this afterwards because I know I'm hoping to cover a lot of information. So I do want to make sure that that um, you get the, the recordings that you can really enjoy that. Now notice every single meditation, starting with the long relaxation, is has a purpose. The obvious one and the not so obvious one. The obvious one for the long relaxation or the centering exercise, we also call it the long relax. So it's got several names, but the centering exercise that you might be more familiar with is to be able to learn how to manage your, your frequencies of brain, to slow them down, to learn how to calm your mind by thinking of a tranquil and passive scene, and to relax your body and, and know how to relax your body completely, fully and completely in just a matter of seconds. You'll remember that in the long relaxation, the first thing we do is to enter our inner state. Usually we do a three, 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 two, 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 one, one, one. The first deep breath is always to relax your body. The second breath is to relax your mind. And the third breath is to cozy yourself into that inner state, okay? That's your starting point. Usually, with the first exercise in the long relaxation, look at my cup. I am a manifestation master. Huh. So I hope I hope you are too. But going back to the exercise, mm. usually in the first exercise, we go through an extensive part by part body relaxation. Concentrate your sense of awareness on your scalp, the skin that covers your head. You will feel a fine vibration. Concentrate on that. A tingling sensation. Hmm. A feeling of warmth caused by circulation. Okay. Now release and relax all tensions and pressures from this part of your head and place it in a deep state of relaxation that will grow deeper and deeper as we continue. Now, during these exercises, it is important to have nice, deep, slow paced belly breathing, okay? Rhythmic. <laughs> but you focus your attention and then the forehead and then the eyes and the tissue surrounding your eyes and then your cheeks tongue jaw and then you there you go all the way down every time we get to the face i always tell people i like to say to people give yourself a little smile be like this because a slight smile helps to relax all the muscles in your face and that's when you finish relaxing the body from head all the way to your toe at that point you make a point of reference oh so this is in your thought process this is what physical relaxation is hmm feels so good i get it everything is relaxed in my body mm -hmm. that's a point of reference you just made a mark you, you made a mental mark as to how it feels. Then we go through the process of guiding you to mental relaxation, favorite place of uh, uh, an ideal place of relaxation, um, maybe a walk to the woods, maybe uh, a time when you've been by the water, maybe fishing or in a boat ride or in a hammock or whatever. You know, so there's we give you different options. A walk to the I would say walk to the woods. Um, we give you several options as to where you can go in your mind to help you relax mentally. And at the end, and we even give you maybe like we give you like maybe thirty seconds to a minute to enjoy that nice, deep, calm inner state. And now, before you were like this, now you're probably more like this. 
And now you say, oh, okay, make a marker, a point of reference. Okay, this is what calm mind feels like. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. That's a point of reference. And then it's one, 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 to just kind of cozy in into that inner state. We call that your basic plane level. That's wherever you find yourself at that point in time, that's your base point, your baseline. That's your starting point. It could be at a high alpha, it could be into theta. Doesn't matter, wherever you find yourself, one, 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 that's it, all right? And then usually we give you what we call compounded deepenings. Once you've done that, all that deepening, both physical and mental, and you're relaxed, then you go back into, okay, Project yourself to your ideal and favorite place of relaxation, a real place that you love to go to at home, your bed, a sofa, chair, whatever, lazy boy, anything, where you really can uh, relax deeply because that will help your body, brain, and mind acknowledge and, again, recognize that you do it all the time. You just haven't been aware of it. And it's real, and it's accessible to you, and it's at home. And in another, at another level, you're already doing mental projection. So you might be at your office listening to this meditation, but you're projecting home to your favorite chair or your bed to relax more deeply. And that's a mental projection, okay? So that's where we get started with that. So anyways, there we go. And then we say, okay, now another compounded uh, deepening, which is relax your eyelids and allow this sense of relaxation to flow slowly downward, all the way down to your toes. It's a wonderful feeling to be deeply relaxed, a very healthy state of being. And then we do another compounded deepening from 10 to 1. 10, feel yourself going deeper and deeper. 9, 8, and we go all the way to 1. I like to feel like I'm on the 10th floor in an elevator, and it's descending quickly towards 1, and you have that feeling of descension. That's what I like to imagine because I can, I, I mean, I'm in elevators often. I know what it feels like, that descending feeling, like coin within like that. So if that helps you to descend, to go deeper within, deeper in thought, for some of you, the big ring, for some of you, it's going to be a heavy sensation. For some of you, it's going to be a light floating sensation. Some of you are going to feel warmer because your blood circulating a little bit fat, you know, more freely because your, your blood vessels open up. Some of, you, some of you might feel a little bit cooler because now you're finally letting go. Whatever is okay. It all works. It's all good, okay? So it all works. You're doing just fine. All right, good. Uh, then we do all those different things only to take you into that deep uh, inner space where you can find your center. That's what we call it, the centering exercise. But all along, you will find that we are programming in, uh, your subconscious with positive programs every day in every way. I'm getting better, better, and better. You know, um, my, my, uh, anytime I improve my thoughts, uh, images, impressions, whatever, you know, my life gets better both physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. You know, uh, so there's a lot of positive programs that we have in there and inner self controls. You can accept or reject anything I say at any level of mind. You are always in control. That's, that's for your own self control to know that I'm in control of my situation. Nobody control my mind nobody but i am going to control my mind and that's it okay and whenever i want to open my eyes and get out of this meditation i can open my eyes or count myself a one to three eyes open or from one to five eyes open it all works not to worry okay and the other thing too is that you know you're always having um built-in lessons like um in order for me to deepen i can count from 100 to one or i can count from 50 to one or I can count from 25 to 1 or 10 to 1. By the time I reach the count of 1, I'll be in a deeper inner level or a deeper inner state. And I can practice once a day. It's good. Two times a day is very good, or three times a day is excellent. If I have a health problem, I practice three times a day for 15 minutes because five minutes is good, 10 minutes is very good, and 15 minutes is excellent. Now, mind you, this is when you set time aside to practice. Now, if you don't always set time aside to practice, you have, within any given day, many opportunities to defocus or just close your eyes and recall your point of reference of when you are in that deep inner state and picture your goals and outcomes. Before a meeting, you know, you feel a little bit, you know, nervous about, you know, the meeting because you're going to be doing a great presentation or some kind of proposal that 
to pre pre prepare yourself. I'm going to have this meeting. I'm going to walk in. I'm, I'm going to be calm and in control. It's going to be going great, great rapport. I meet with them. Everything's fine. And then lock it in with your three fingers technique, and I'll talk a little bit more about that, okay? And now you're, you're prepared, and you picture the outcome that you wish. You open your eyes, and now you're ready to go. But keep your fingers together during the meeting, okay? It might help you. Okay, so, but that's when you apply it on the go, as you need to, throughout the day. But when you set time aside, five minutes is good of practice, 10 minutes is very good, and 15 minutes is excellent, okay? <coughs> Ideally, three times a day. Nobody has an excuse to not practice at least twice a day. Nobody. Because you have to wake up in the morning, stay in bed for one, two, three, four, five minutes or more, and plan your day. You have to go to sleep and go through alpha to get to delta at night, so there's no excuse. Go to sleep with a meditation, planning tomorrow, reviewing today, whatever you need to do. So there's no excuse. And throughout the day, go in and out, in and out, 10 seconds, 15, 20, 30 seconds at a time as you need it, okay? And always converting chaos into flow to keep yourself centered and manage. In Silver Manifesting, we do the one-minute meditations. And if you were to just pause and, and just go within for one minute, several times a day, your day would be in flow. And one minute in a meditation seems like much longer. That's why we use, sometimes we say, when you hear my voice again, an hour of time will have elapsed at this level of mind. Now, we say that during the meditations, especially with a sensory exercise. Why? Because there is no sense of time when you're meditating. So we can really take advantage of that and make even 30 seconds very worthwhile, okay? All right, good. So, correct way of entering alpha, basically, it's just, as I mentioned, closing your eyes, taking a deep breath, relaxing your, your body physically, relaxing your mind, and then continue, continuing to breathe deeply, slowly, and rhythmically. Now, those of you who know the 3 two, one method, obviously, you're going to have the first deep breath, which is 333, three, three, to relax the body. And remember how good it feels, or how good it has felt every time you Practice the long relaxation and relax your body just as much. Another deep breath. And as you exhale, relax your mind by thinking of a tranquil and passive scene. And the third deep breath to be in your starting point. And then from there, you get going. You can do a 10 to 1 countdown if you want to deepen further. Or just get right to your, your purpose, the purpose of your meditation. Now, all meditations, whether they're dynamic passive, whether it's transcendental, Zen Buddhist, it doesn't matter. Whatever kind, the silver method type, whatever, all meditations use four steps. You enter in some way that usually requires you to close your eyes for the reason I explained. The second one is that you deepen your state by relaxing your body muscles and your mind. The third is to do what you're there to do, the purpose of the meditation. If you're doing Silva, Mirror of the Mind, or something like that, you, you're setting goals. You're maybe doing self-pain management. You're using the, the formula type technique. You're whatever. And then you're going to exit. And you can exit by just simply opening your eyes or giving yourself a more gradual exit of one to five or one to three, or by going to sleep. When you do your meditations at night, you're going to go into your meditation, and from there, just go to sleep. Don't bring yourself back to beta to go back down to delta. No. From your meditation, whether you be at alpha or theta, you're closer to deep, slow-wave sleep from there. So don't bring yourself back out. From your meditation at night, just go to sleep, okay? All right, good. I hope that helps. Um, let me just make sure that we're good here. And if you have any questions or comments, please. Um, Make sure you ask me. And if you asked the question a long time ago and I haven't seen it, then ask it again, okay? So Autumn asks, so you can go to level without long counting down and elevator two? Of course you can, especially once you have established your points of reference with physical and mental relaxation, what it feels like to you. When you're familiar with that inner state, by simply recalling that inner state, and, and continue to, to do your deep breathing, 
that would be your deep, slow paced rhythm, rhythmic breathing that would take you there. Okay. How do I feel that my feet are not connected to my body? And where do I picture my feet? You know, just imagine it. You know, if I had no feet, how would that feel? And the reason we do that is, and I know sometimes some people might feel uncomfortable with that exercise because we say, feel your feet as though they don't don't belong to your body, your feet, ankles, calves, knees, thighs, shoulders, arm, shoulder, I mean, thighs, waist, shoulders, arms, and hands feel as though they do not belong to your body. At that point in time, you only experience yourself as inside, interstate, whatever, outside the boundary of what is the physical body. You know, mind is everywhere. You connect with mind and intelligence everywhere. You know, that one energy that we are all a part of. And so to get to that, that point, uh, really requires you to be in a very deep inner state. So desensitization, um, uh, where you feel, you don't feel your body happens mostly at the theta frequencies. But when you go through the deep part by part body relaxation that we go through with the sensory and exercise, chances are very high that that's where you're at. So to feel like your feet don't belong to your body or your body is non-existent is something you can use your imagination or just take it for granted. So just what, what, what would my body feel like without feet or ankles or legs or arms? What, my, what would I feel like without a body? How would that be? And just allow your imagination to come up, to muster up anything that resonates most with you, okay? But again, you, a lot of these things happen will, or will happen more obviously and more evidently to you with practice. So the more you practice, the less of these questions you're going to have, okay? So practice. Um, let me see. Great, great. Is uh, inner conscious and subconscious the same? The same frequencies, but different levels of awareness. That's a, Susanna asked that. So subconscious is, is the same alpha and theta frequencies. Uh, but for people who have no awareness uh, of being there, no access to them with awareness. But when you do meditation and when you do establish your points of reference and you go deeper and deeper every time, you're transforming the subconscious. Subconscious, remember, all means below awareness. So you're transforming the subconscious into your inner conscious. So for you, it would be no longer subconscious, more so it would be inner conscious, okay? But the deeper you go, and the more awareness you establish those deep inner frequencies, inner levels of, of, within you, of mind, of intellect, um, then it's more, um, it's gonna be your inner conscious, all right? Good question. Um, the three fingers technique. Okay, so the question that Sada is asking is, that um, about the three fingers technique in the meditation you say to put your fingers together but how long do i keep them like that depends if you are just locking in or programming the three fingers technique in a meditation you just want to say by putting my three fingers together like this i will be able to enter my alpha frequencies one hand or the other or both that's your choice okay i normally just use one hand so by doing this, but if I'm going to program it, I might do both. But by putting my fingers together, this will allow me to enter my uh, inner state easily and quickly with just simply pressing my three fingers together. And you locked it in. You program it. Okay. Now, if I'm going to use it, uh, let's say before a meeting, then I might just close my my eyes on the spot or do a meditation I have, if I'm capable of or have time to do that. And I'm gonna say I'm having this meeting. I'm gonna go, uh, you know, to talk to my boss and make this presentation. My breathing is right. My eye contact is perfect. My posture is tall and confident. My voice is clear. I am articulating clearly. My thoughts are flowing very, very clearly and precisely. My presentation is going to be just perfect. I'm gonna make a great impression because I'm gonna be rested. I'm gonna look great. I'm going to be feeling confident. And when you're feeling all these great experiences, this great you, during the meeting, as if you're presenting the meeting already, in the best ways, you lock it in. When you lock it in, you say, this is how I'm going to be during the meeting. And then you just experience yourself doing a great job with your fingers pressed together. All right? So now you can open your eyes, walk up to the boss's door, knock on the door, 
take a deep breath press your fingers together and walk in with your fingers together because it's such a comfortable position of the hands it's very unnoticeable and then during the meeting I would either leave my fingers together press like this as I'm talking or press them as I need to throughout the meeting to keep me focused and connected confident and 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 just you know positive all the way through okay I hope that helps but the three fingers technique is one of those techniques because it's come up several times that you are able to utilize for so many things it's it's probably the technique I use the most because uh, the three fingers can be used to access uh, inner resources and remember you have access to every single resource that you can imagine all of you have been confident at something all of you have been courageous at something all of you have had self inner controls at, at some, in, under, in some context all of you have whatever okay all of you have ev access to every resource just access it recall a time when you had confidence or courage or inner strength and just say, yeah I remember how I felt yeah okay good open your eyes and go for it kind of thing okay so it's to access in the resources to allow you to be more patient more loving more tolerant more understanding, uh, have more compassion, uh, to be able to to um, have a high, heightened intuition, to connect with lost items or objects, to recall information, to whatever. Okay, so what do you need it for? Use it. It's again, it's one of the what the, the techniques. I use almost all the time to be more sensitive to what my audience needs when I'm teaching a seminar or even right now. I mean, if you were to look at me, you can see my hands all the time. I'm like this all the time because it's one of those things that keeps me in tune and focused and on target. And I mean, it just works for me like magic. All right. So that's um, one of the techniques that we incorporate very frequently. I always use the three fingers technique when I'm in the experience of having achieved my outcome. Now, we'll talk about the mirror of the mind a little bit, but when I'm in the experience of having achieved my outcome, I always lock it in, lock it in, allow my body, brain, mind, my soul to, to own this experience, and when I own it, it becomes mine. To memorize it, to own it, and to make it, your, make it yours. That way, your body, brain, and mind say, this is what we're working towards. I know how to create this especially throughout the day when you're feeling vulnerable or doubtful you say ah cancel 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 that out press your fingers even for like five seconds ten seconds and say no no no, this is mine I'm gonna make it happen I will make it happen I am it's mine I own it it's mine this or some of you already know what I'm gonna say better than this okay this or better always okay good uh, so that's your three fingers technique. But let me go back to the, the, the techniques I started this conversation with. Every meditation, every technique has its obvious purpose, like the sensory and exercise that we've been talking about so much, but because it's so important. But the other thing that the sensory and exercise helps you to do, especially for those of you who say, I, I, I don't have a lot of focus or concentration, is that it gives you focus, concentration, and added depth. Okay, because you have to say concentrate your sense of awareness on your scalp, the skin that covers your head, not your big toe, not what you're going to cook for dinner, not the argument you had with your, your spouse. No, just your scalp. For that moment, that's all you do. And then your forehead, that's all you do. Okay, so because it, it allows you to do that, it really gives you more discipline, concentration focus and depth now we move into sleep control that's the first exercise that you learn in the audio or live seminar sleep control is one of the first things you learn besides managing stress through the long relaxation that's the other one managing stress um, uh, so being able to learn how to relax that's for the the, the the centering exercise but once you've got that then the first technique is sleep control because sleep control again is one of those things that it's an outcome if you just go deeper and deeper within. Because the deepest place you can go is slow wave sleep. That's delta frequencies. So the deeper you go, and that's where you go every single night or day of, of your life. Every time you sleep, you're going to delta. Everybody does. It's just the way the human body and brain work. So when you do meditations, it's no different than what you do at night 
as you're preparing to go to sleep. But what is different is that you're stopping and adding awareness into what was once the subconscious and transforming that into inner conscious and adding inner self-controls where you can go in there and pull yourself back out to the outer experience, to the outer world. Most people will go into Delta, slow wave sleep, and they don't they stay there till they wake up. Okay? Not you. You go in there and you have inner self-controls to pull you out and come back to the outer world. All right. So sleep control, obviously, it has incorporated with it the 10, the 100 to 1 countdown that we already programmed the century and exercise to help you to deepen. Well, yeah, deepen where? To delta, slow wave sleep. So that's why we incorporate. The, the the 10 to 1 the 100 to 1 countdown in the sleep control technique the other thing that we incorporate is the visual aspect it has a visual an auditory and a kinesthetic component to it so you're going to visualize the circle you know you're going to draw a big x within the circle you're going to erase it very carefully. So for those of you who are very kinesthetic, you raise your arm and hand and begin to erase it very carefully, but not to erase the circle in the least because now you're focusing what? On details. On the details and not on the, on the challenges or the problems and the chat, the chitch in the head that keep you awake. And then to the right, not to the left, not up, but to the right. And outside the, outside the, the circle, you write the word deeper. Every time you write the word deeper in this matter, you will be entering a deeper, healthier level of mind in the direction of normal, natural, healthy sleep. Now, I do recommend to everybody to have a journal by their bedside or a note, notebook, a spiral notebook even, and, and write down everything that's on your mind that may keep you awake. The bills to pay, the argument you had earlier, the problems with with your, your children, the fact that you have to go to the doctors to get some reports, some friend is sick, whatever it is, and write them all down on a piece of paper. That way you take it from outside of you and on a piece of paper. It's no longer keeping you awake. And it's, it, won't, it won't keep you awake. It's not inside you. It's right here on the piece of paper. But say, these are the things that keep, might keep me awake. And this is what I, I, I can do to get to this outcome. So what's the problem or challenge? What's a potential strategy, if you have one, and what would be an ideal outcome? So you take one, two minutes to do that. I argue with my spouse, oh, I'll call him tomorrow, tell him, honey, I love you so much, you know, and then, and then picture us happy and having a wonderful, you know, day together when he comes home from work or when we both come home from work, whatever, something like, like that, all right? And then you do your meditation to do the sleep control. Now, uh, with sleep control, you just continue to go and go until you get into sleep. Some people say, well, I went to 100 to 1 and I got up. Well, no, no, then do it again. Don't open your eyes. Just continue. Because this is like an inside battle. It's you against you. Okay? It's like, yes, you can. No, you can. Yes, you can. It's like the ego saying, no, you can't do it. I'm in control of you. And you say, no, you're not. I'm in control of me. And I'm going to do it. Just watch. But if you give up, then guess who won? Okay, it's like the little angel devil on the shoulder kind of thing, all right? So you want to be very clear that when you apply any formula type technique of Silva, you follow the formula as it was programmed, that's one, and you do it until it works, especially with something like sleep control. Even if you have to go 100 to 1 three times, you're going to do it, okay? And you're going to win. And there, make sure you have the desire to make it happen, that you believe that you're going to, that you're capable of making it happen, and you expect it without a doubt. You expect with full conviction the outcome of sleep or whatever outcome it is. Now, with sleep control, how do you make that work? Stick to the formula and watch your pitch and pace and volume of your inner voice. You're not going to say 100, deeper, 99, deeper, deeper, deeper. No. You're going to use a sleepy voice. 100, deeper, 99, erase, deeper. You see the big difference? All right, so 
the, 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 the very excited voice is what you want to use in the morning when you, don't, when you can't get yourself up, when you go like, oh, I don't want to get up. At that point, you say, come on, get up, get up, let's go, it's food, time to go to work, get dressed, let's take a shower, let's go exercise, whatever. So make sure you switch the voices around, the excited voice in the morning, the sleepy voice at night. Slow, low, and very paced, okay? Okay, it's low pitch also, all that. These are the things that are gonna make this technique work. Be persistent, be tenacious, stick to the program, make it happen, because once you do it once, you'll always make it work after that. Then we have sleep control, then we have the clock technique. The clock technique is one of the techniques I hope you use every day. You do not, at this point in time, should be using the alarm clock to, 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 make, to wake you up in the morning, because alarm clocks are alarms. And we don't want to have alarms waking us up. And we want to make sure that with the clock technique, again, you engage your visual, auditory, and kinesthetic elements. I visualize the clock very clearly. And if you need to put an analog clock, put an analog clock too. I mean, a, a digital clock. Because a lot of people aren't, aren't that used to analog clocks anymore. Remember that these techniques were, were created back in the 60s. In the 50s, actually. And so the clock, although I resonate with, because I've used it all my life, I also sometimes have a digital clock on the side on my mental screen as well. On my mental screen, not a real one. And then I, I move the hands to the clock. If you need to engage yourself kinesthetically, move the hands to the right time. And I see the numbers flipping on my analog clock. And when I got the numbers, I sync affirmatively. So that's a visual, auditory, and now kinesthetic. This is the time I, I want to awaken. And this is a time I am going to awaken. If you need to, especially those of you who tend to wake up during the night, then imagine that you're sleeping soundly through 12 and then 1 and then 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 and 7, and that you wake up and you look at the clock exactly at the time that you want to awaken, okay? And get up and out of bed, <laughs> all right? <laughs> all right, now the other thing too is uh, with this technique is that a lot of people are satisfied with just waking up close to time, close to target. And I say that's not what the goal is. The goal is to wake up on target all the time. So if you're used to doing 7 o'clock in the morning or 6 o'clock in the morning, do 6.02, uh, 5.58, 6.07, 6.09, 6.10, 6.11, 6.12, 6.13, 6.14, 6.15, 6.16, 6.17, 6.18, 6.19, 6.20, 6.21, 6.22, 6.23, 6.24, 6.25, 6
you, you, you will have success with every formula so long as you stick to the formula. And every single formula has a way or has multiple purposes. Sleep control, you're learning to manage the inner voice, the inner dialogue. You're learning to manage your inner state. You're making that voice work for you, not against you. In the clock technique, you're going to learn a way to manifest all your desired outcomes. In the, the, the energizing yourself, you're going to have a formula, a five-step formula to help you achieve all kinds of problem solutions. In the mirror of the mind, it's really the most fantastic technique. For me, that is the key technique. With three fingers technique and mirror the mind, oof, magic happens. And in the beginning, we really have like three phases to that. The first one is to all of them always entering your meditation as you wish. Three to one or closing your eyes, taking a deep breath, however you wish. The, the, the main thing is to internalize your focus. Once you know how to go within, you can do it by just simply, simply closing your eyes. If you need to use three to one, use it. I still use three to one. I mean, it's easy. So once you're in your meditation, you visualize a mirror, one mirror. That's called the mirror of the mind. It's out and away from you on the area of your mental screen. Now, the mental screen doesn't have to have a frame. The mental screen is just that area around where you picture things. Okay? It's just that whole area where you picture things. But on that mental screen, that mental screen there, you create a mirror that can be amplified in size that to put into the, the frame a small scene or a large scene, one person or many people. And its color is blue. Blue simply denotes your current situation, which could be the problem as well. You study it for a few moments. You project it, and then you study for a few moments just to know, this is my starting point. This is what I'm leaving behind. This is what, what I created, because you did create it. And you might even want to acknowledge what, you did to allow this to happen or you created it or you allowed it to happen but that's not what i want anymore so you erase it any way you can imagine erase it move it towards your left obviously for you it's this way but towards your left and you change the color of the frame to white and now you project within the white frame the outcome image and and then you leave it at that and now you evolve the outcome image as you wish and make sure it's really compelling, it's very desirable, you believe you can make it happen, you must believe you can make it happen. And you expect it without a doubt to make it happen, okay? That's step one. That in itself is a way we practice the mirror of the mind for almost 50 years. And as time continued to, to evolve from the beginning of the Scylla method to maybe the maybe 2000, I started to bring in other, other elements. I started to bring in more of the desire, the belief, and the expectancy. So step two is to do the same thing, but when you create your outcome image, is to really desire it. I really desire this, I want this so much, and you know what desire feels like. You know how desire is going to make a difference in your life, and how it has played a role in the past. Because from desire alone, you made a lot of things happen. I really, I know it's going to happen. I know I'm capable. I know I'm worthy of it. I know I'm deserving. And I know and knowing is believing. And I expect it to happen. Absolutely no doubt whatsoever. And you have made things happen because you, in your past history, because you believed in it so much or because you knew it had to happen. You, you expected it. All right, so you build those energies, subjective energies of desire, belief, and expectancy eh, to make it really powerful. So you added another element, which is the energetic component. And the third step, and you can do this from the very beginning as well, is to do the same thing, build a lot of desire, and bring that image closer to you. Build a lot of belief. I know I can make it happen. I will have. I will make it happen. I'm worthy of it. I deserve it, and bring it closer still. And I know expectancy, you know, any moment now, it's going to happen. It will happen. And you bring closer enough where you can step into the image of you that has already achieved. When you step into it, you want to like, kind of like just step into it and just kind of be one with it, okay? You want to become one with that image and now experience that you, that future you who has different thoughts, different beliefs, and different behaviors. You have to. You cannot possibly have the same thoughts, beliefs, and behaviors and become that future you. You get it? So in order to be that future you, you have already elevated your thoughts, beliefs, and behaviors. 
And now notice how that feels to be that future you. That future you who has more income or that future you who has found the love of your life or that future you who has reduced 10 pounds or that future you who is on this European vacation or whatever. It feels great. And now you emote, have the emotions. I love this life of mine. I love this me. I love what I have achieved. I love what this, you know, all this kind of stuff. So uh, emotions, coherent emotions of gratitude, appreciation, love, you know, positivity, all of these things are really good. So not only now do you have the subjective energies of desire, belief, and expectancy, but you're also adding to that your the emotions that are going to make to project out into the field around you that are going to attract more of what you want to achieve and the, and then you lock in that experience of achievement when it's at its peak and now anytime during the day when it comes to mind you just say yeah you put your fingers together and you go back there goes yes ah feels wonderful mm. okay open your eyes and get going okay and you can do this many times during the day Keeps you connected to your goal, to your target, right? I know there's so much I can tell you here. There's so many things. Um, and with a mirror of the mind, that's one of the things that you're going to utilize to not only heal yourself, but also to project healing energy to others. You can picture that other person, project, you know, and send them healing energy. Picture that their body is shaping up and doing better and better. Project energy from your hands, blue, white, and color, right from right to left. If their heart is wrong, imagine their heart right there, and you're projecting energy to their heart, and their heart's getting better and healthier. I mean, go over your tools and techniques. They're there. But I just want to make sure that, that, they're, that you're noticing when you're doing your meditation that the meditations themselves and the formula type techniques have elements that, that incorporate your visual, kinesthetic, and auditory components, that they are helping you to have internal controls of how to manage your internal dialogue, the voice in your head. That voice in your head is really going to support you or belittle you. So you want to support you, that you bring in energies of desire, belief, and expectancy, and emotions that are positive emotions to boost you up, and that every time, every time that you picture outcomes, that you don't just picture them separated from the outcome, but you actually go into the experience and you lock it in, okay? And when you lock it in, you're able to connect with it frequently throughout the day. That what you practice and learn in the audio programs and in the live seminars is training. How you apply what you learn in a practical way is that you go in and out, in and out, by just closing your eyes briefly or defocusing your, your vision and just concentrating on the images and the inner experience and then blinking and coming back out again. You have no excuse to practice in the morning as you wake up because your frequency is still at alpha and no excuse to practice at night as you're going to sleep because you've got to go through alpha and theta to get to delta, okay? And again, um, there's a lot that we can work on. Um, how can I stop the constant mind chatter every time I go into the 321 level? Don't bother. Just focus on picturing the 333 or hear your voice, 333, and then choo, choo, choo. If you picture and focus on the on the 333 and relax in the body, that's what it's meant to do. It's a trigger mechanism for physical relaxation. The chatter is less. If you focus on being in that tranquil and passive scene with 222, two, two, the chatter will be less. The more you focus on the internal experience and what you're there to do, the less the external chatter gets in the way. And then again, one, one, one. when the chatter gets in the way, pay attention to it. Maybe you need to focus a little bit of time on that little chatter and say, you know what, I don't care what you're telling me, not now, I'm not interested, or thank you for telling me that, let me put some energy to that during this meditation, okay? But you manage the chatter. Either pay attention to it or tell it right off. I'm not, I don't need you right now. You can come back later. Go take a break, have a coffee, <laughs> go have yourself some tea, go to sleep because right now I'm busy. And just address it to it and, and take action, okay? Um, what I recommend on a daily basis to maintain an overall ideal mindset, both spiritual, emotional, uh, healthy, or, and I would say, Physiolog physiological and, and mental, intellectual, um, and how frequently, I think I've already told you that, morning, no excuse, nighttime, no excuse, during the day, in and out, in and out. So I always do imagery, I always get into the experience. For me, um, mirror the mind is one of my key techniques because it really covers a lot of ground. 
Um, started six months ago. What techniques can I integrate into my life practice to help me remember and learn the techniques? The mental screen is really important because your mental screen is where you picture things. When you picture something on the mental screen, whether it's going to be your notes, your phone numbers, people's faces, uh, attached to their names, whatever it is, and you tell yourself, I, my memory gets better and better every day. Remember that everybody has perfect memory. What we have is poor recallability. And the reason we have poor recallability is because we don't impress information strongly into our brain. So the stronger the impression, the easier the recall of information. So you need to pay attention to what you want to remember. You need to have a way to access it. That's why we have the memory peg system in Silva. Uh, uh, visuals you know, are also always very important. You need to give your images that you want to remember, color, action, make them exaggerate in size or number, or make them funny, because it makes stronger impressions. The stronger the impression and the more attention you pay to that, the easier the recall. I practice memory pegs almost daily. T, Noah, May, Ray, La, Ja, Ki, Fi, Bei, Toes. Those are the 10 most basic memory pegs. And you don't usually need more than 10. So I would urge you either go back into your, your, your workbook, look at the 10 memory pegs, or get Bruno's, Bruno first, B-R-U-N-O-F-U-R-S-T, way back, old information, but very effective uh, course on memory. So the memory book, I think it's called. And you can still find it on Amazon, and it's easy to access, and very practical, okay? Very easy to use. But you got to do it. One thing is to know it and not use it. That's like not knowing it. But to know it and apply it means you really know it, okay? So use it. I'm a writer. I visualize all the time. Um, but the type of visualizing for the meditations for Silva feel unnatural and forced to me. How do I adapt them to be uh, more natural for myself? Thinking? Just do it. There's no reason why you have to do what we tell you to do exactly the way we tell you to do it. The only thing is that when you have a formula technique program, like when you picture the clock or do the sleep control, yeah, that is a more um, structured uh, formula. It's a recipe, like a recipe for a cake. You're going to follow the recipe because that's a way to program to get the outcome. But if you don't need to use sleep control, don't bother with it. If you don't need to use a clock technique to wake up because you already wake up naturally in, in your own style, then do your own style. These are formula type techniques that are there for you that you can apply when and if you need them. Okay? So there's no excuse for any of you to have any problems uh, that are ongoing. Now, yes, welcome. I always welcome challenges and projects into my life because they allow me to use my wisdom, my knowledge, and my tools, my techniques, and I solve them. And I go, okay, next. But to think, to stay with the same problem over and over and over again, that's ridiculous, okay? So totally ridiculous. Um, so adopt them to, to fit your style, but just get to the point where you feel confident with what you've learned and then make all kinds of changes as you wish or need to. And someone uh, made a recommendation about getting a charitable to charitable charitable trust for the welfare of children or needy people where silver practitioners can donate too. I think it's a great idea. Um, you know, we always donate a lot of stuff. As you free webinars is one one way. We 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 donate locally a lot to to the orphanage, to the church that we belong to, to needy situations, people, things like that. So I think we always do our own thing, our own a part if we all did our own part and, and donate what we have and, and know and if you let us know how we can help by all means we're always help happy to help and willing to help um, but let me let me talk to you know the guys around here and see how we can more so maybe create some kind of trust that all of you yeah, whenever you want to maybe we can put a little post in our uh, on the Laura, com page and then you can just go ahead and and say, I donate so much money, and we can keep you posted as to how the donations are growing and where you would like to donate to. That'd be great. So, Farrah says, thanks so much. She was delayed, but this, she didn't join. And, um, and the, the difference between mirror the mind and hollow viewing is not that much. The only difference between mirror the mind and hollow viewing is that in hollow viewing, you're in the experience and everything around you is working with you. With the idea and the concept that you're working from the now, 
everything happens greater from the now. <clears throat> so now you're in the now and everything, everything that's alive and, and around you, your dog, your plants, the people around you, you, you can be everything in the experience as well. You're one with the doctor or the lawyer or the judge or your children. You're the one and the same with your pets or whatever. And all of you are working towards that outcome. Okay, so that's a really, that's a different experience within the whole experience of looking around. But when you get to the mirror of the mind, step three, where you go into the experience, it's very similar. So you can choose one or the other, all right? Well, guys, gee, I, I hope I answered a lot of your questions. I know maybe um, there's some things that you might uh, want to ask more of, and we'll be happy to help you. And hopefully, if you like this kind of an approach for the webinars, then we'll be happy to, to do this more often with you. And just notice, that we do have a four pay webinar coming up and it's gonna be a little bit longer two and a half maybe three hours i'd say about two and a half to three hours um february 22nd and that's going to be on subjective programming and that goes back to self and or others and how to use the subjective experience for programming i know i've kept you way over I apologize for that. I hope you all hung in there with me. Love you guys. Go back to the replay. We covered a lot of ground. And I'm just so grateful that you all showed up. I'm here to serve you. I work for you. Remember that, okay? Talk to you guys later. See you soon. And keep us posted. Keep in touch, okay? We want to hear from you all the time. Mwah. Love you guys. Bye.